Yeah, that'll do, Mr. Bones. Thanks for finding this. That'll do really well. Hi, everybody. Welcome to week 16. So this is the Warbly Wheel and Axle. Yay! It's the thing that we use every day to come to school. So in our exploration of our simple machines, we've gone through the incline plane, we've gone through the wedge, we've gone through the lever and the screw. Now we are getting onto the Warbly Wheel and Axle, one of the last two that we're going for for our simple machines. So, the first concept we gotta understand now is something called torque. Now, if you remember when we were talking about screws, we talked about rotational force, which is the screw spins like the jar lid and screws down and it changes that rotational force to a linear force, which is going up and down. So from a turn to an up and down, well, torque turns that rotational force from a small rotational force into a big rotational force. So instead of like a little small thing spinning like this, you're gonna spin like this and then it's gonna transfer it to a big spin, huge spin. So one of your arms will be cranking like this, the other one, huge, and that's torque. So I'm spinning down here and I'm getting a big result on another large wheel over here. All right, so how do we exactly we define a wheel and axle? Well, a wheel and axle uses torque that little move to a big move to exchange the force between the little one and the really big one. Things we use all the time are cars. How we get to school, how we get around town. They have an engine and that engine spins a little tiny crank that goes out and fires off all those wheels and transfers that energy from the engine straight into the wheels and then it goes and goes taken off. That's how you get around town most of the time. Some of you might actually ride a bike. Look at your wheels on your bike. You'll notice they're connected. That's the big black dots here. They're connected by an axle. And that axle is that place, the center where they connect. And then it has the big wheel spinning around it. Now you see that wheel spinning like this, but if you look at the axle, it looks like it's spinning a thousand miles an hour, but they're really turning at the same rate. It just looks so much different because it feels like the one in the center is going really fast while the one on the outside is going much slower. And then, Something you can see in class every single day. Tape dispenser, tape dispenser. Wheel and axle right here. The tape is the wheel and the axle, is this little point right here. So they connect in there and that's your axle and this is your wheel. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And that's how you get to dispense your tape. So let's get into the big board. Here comes your drawing. There's a lot on here because it's a pretty big concept to think about. Because the wheel itself, the wheel and axle, is probably, I think they rate it as the most significant invention in human history. So this is the one that took us from just being little tribes and able to travel huge distances carrying huge amounts of stuff with us. It allowed trade, all sorts of cool stuff. So this is the drawing of the principle. You have your axle through the center and you have your wheel. I have a little tiny wheel here. So. What this is showing is they both have a little axle in the center. That's the red one. And this is the force that's getting applied to it, that little brown loop there. And then the black line on the outside, that's the wheel. And you can see it's covering a much greater distance. In fact, I measured this and drew dotted lines on the board. So you can see this one here, that's about how long that axle goes. Same here, almost the exact same length, but notice the wheel sizes are different. So if I spin this axle, the wheel goes it went so far, I had to put it on a whole nother board. That's how long that wheel would go for the exact amount of turn that's the same as this one. As it spins, you can see it only get, it only went that far. So this one is a much smaller wheel, much bigger wheel, exact same axle, exact same spin. So if we look at our wheel here, and I'm gonna use the skewer as an axle through the center of it, just like that, then as I turn the skewer, the wheel turns, but I'm turning this tiny, tiny little thing and I'm getting a lot of more spin out of this wheel with my little tiny turn in the center. And that is that energy transfer. This is the torque going through, the amount of force I'm putting on that little piece in the center to get the bigger one to move. Well, I wanna show you this in a little bit better detail. So I'm gonna go over to my table so I can show you how pencils are basically wheels. So. 
For a very long time, those huge structures like ancient Mayan and Aztec temples, um, the pyramids, things like that, they were moving huge, heavy, heavy pieces of stone and limestone across vast distances. And the way they did it is they would use pencils. No, I'm kidding. They didn't want to use pencils. Well, they probably did use some sort of graphite. But what they would do is they'd go to a forest, they'd chop down the trees, put them on their sides, and then they become wheels. They're round, just like a wheel is, and they roll just like a wheel rolls. And what they would do is they would kind of spread them out a little bit, and then they would use one of our fancy other simple machines, like a lever, to wedge it up. They use a lever to lift it up, and then they put a wedge under it to hold it in place, and they'd start by putting that first log under there. They'd set the weight down, and then they would start carefully pushing it forward or dragging it behind like a team of ox or large cattle and they would pull in, they would just pull and they would pull them and as you can see, it's rolling across those pencils until it gets across and then they would just roll it slowly and carefully because they don't want to destroy the giant piece of stone but they also don't want to stop this and then, well, there's no more, there's no more logs here so what do they do? They have a team come around to the back, pick this tree up, remember this is a whole tree which is our wheel carry it around and put it in the front and then keep pushing the large stone across. Oh, here comes another one out the back. Boom, and go through it. Now you can just imagine how many forests were cut down so that they would have enough trees because unlike our pencils, trees would fall apart, they would break, so they'd have to keep adding trees. And they believe that Easter Island with those giant heads on it was possibly wiped out because they cut down all the forest to roll those big pieces of stone down. So this is where it comes to Samaria, one of my favorite spots for invention as well as astronomy and just figuring out how the time of our universe works that we live in and how we experience it. The oldest recorded version of not just a wheel like this, but an axle going through the center of it starts about 5,200 years ago in Samaria. It's the oldest one we've found. Doesn't mean we didn't have it before then, it's just the oldest one that we've uncovered. And by doing this, instead of needing an entire forest full of trees to move these, you just need one gigantic wagon. And with this, you could take your giant weight, set it on there, and then, with just maybe a one tree and then some big wheels, you can start rolling it around. So now I don't have to cut a whole forest down to move something, I can do this. Also what it did is it meant instead of your one horse having to carry your supplies, you can have a giant wagon. I could put all my clothes on here, I could put my food on here, I could put lumber on here, large amounts, I can start moving huge, huge amounts of stuff from one location to another. And I can keep going for a long time because instead of me having to carry all that weight or have like my donkey or horse carrying it, I can just have a wagon which makes it so much easier. I can get so much further. Suddenly, I can start trading and I can start covering the entire planet and traveling around. And I can wake up in the morning, take a shower, hop in the car and be to school in 20 minutes instead of having to walk to school, which might take a couple hours. So. It's an awesome invention. Now we're gonna make our own so that we can see that principle in action. All right, so for today's experiment, we're actually gonna be making two wheels and an axle that we can play with them and see how they work in real life. Um, what we're gonna be using is four paper plates, our ruler, a pencil that's sharp because you're gonna to need to make some marks, maybe a pencil that's flat, some tape, and a carpeted area or something that you can poke through so that you're not poking into like a hardwood floor or linoleum or something like that. So we ran some experiments uh, before and you definitely need to make sure that you measure. And if you need, um, get, get some help from your parents. You can do it as a team. You can have some fun working together. So these plates, which I believe everybody should have, measure about nine inches. All right, so I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to use the inch side here. Let me rotate that around. We're going to use the inch side here, and we're going to see how close it gets to about nine inches. Right about there. Yep, looks like that's about it. And then I'm going to 
gently push it down a little bit and just make a line. Now I'm going to figure out where the other side is. So I'm gonna to go to the nine inches until I see it get to right about nine inches. About it. There, and I'm gonna draw another line. And what you should end up with is one that's almost perfectly in the center. And you're gonna need at least two of these. So I have my plate that I've done my measurement on and I measured it twice just to check because that first one looked like it was a little bit off, so I wanted to double check. So I got this one here, and I'm just gonna take one of the other plates, I'm gonna put it underneath like this, and then I'm gonna use my pencil to poke a hole through it. And it should go right through both plates, just like that. And there you go, pencil passes right through. Perfect, it's right where we want it. Now, I'm gonna take, and because these can be kind of flopsy, I wanna reinforce them a little bit, so I wanna take another plate on the outside, like this, and I want to So, tape it. a plate that doesn't have a hole. A plate that doesn't have a hole. One of your other two. So you wanna keep this one, because this is where your axle is gonna connect between your two wheels. So now, I'm making some nice, strong wheels. So I'm just making sure the plates are lined up on either side putting a little bit of tape there. And it's giving it a little bit better structure so it can hold itself up. And I'm just gonna put four pieces of tape on. You could put six or eight, depending on how strong you want it to be. I'm looking for the places where it wants to pull apart. You can glue them together too if you don't have tape, but it'll just take longer to dry. Yeah, it'll take much longer to dry. So there, now I have my wheel. Woo! But it doesn't really stand up very well. But it does seem like it's strong, like it could take a little bit of weight, a little pressure. And there it is. That's our first wheel. Now our second wheel, once again, plate with a hole in it. Plate with no hole. Put it on top. And I'm gonna take this. And a fun project you can do with these is if you make a couple of them, you could attach a string to the axle part and make a couple, maybe even color them or paint them, and race. You could race your siblings, you could race your parents, you could put two up and see which one you can get to go faster. And all sorts of fun, interesting things with it. So now I'm gonna put my squared off pencil in here. Yeah, it kinda collapses down a little bit. There. So I've got my first axle and wheel, see? So as I turn this, the wheel goes. Just like that. So much distance. Now if I were to turn the pencil at the same, it would go this far. That's the difference. This pencil, one rotation. So see the letters are up. One rotation. That's as far as it went. This one, letters are up. I'm gonna clear out a spot. Letters are up. Woo! Miss Kim's lap. It's on the table. That's off the table. <laughs> That's torque. That's that difference. That's that transfer that happens. I'm going to put the other one on this side and there you go. So now you have your wheel and axle. You could put a cart here. You could put yourself on a bike here. You could put your car would sit on something like this. Now if you want to strengthen it up a bit, add a little tape. Hope that it holds in place some. Just to kind of keep it a little bit straighter. If you have something like Play-Doh, if you remember with our uh, our sundial experiment, we used a little bit of clay or Play-Doh to help hold it in place, just to help hold it up, try to keep it in place so that it doesn't f fall over. Then I'll put a little on the other side. And remember, it just needs to kind of keep the wheels from, from moving around too much. So that's all I'm trying to do. And then, we can go down here to the ground, and when I give it a little push, there you go, wheel and axle in action. Crash. <laughs> and that's it. Have fun, make a couple of them, try different size plates if you want, try different size wheels with the same and see how much energy it takes. You can have tons of fun, you can have races, awesome, and look around, see what else has a wheel and axle. Bye.